From the book, The Living Bread, by Thomas Merton. Sacramental Contemplation. True contemplation of the mystery of the Eucharist is not possible in the last analysis if we do not resist the temptations to anthropomorphism or to spiritism, which beset us when we try to explain to ourselves the real presence and its consequences. Anthropomorphism, in this case, consists usually in confusing the concept of Christ's natural, local, or physical presence by which he is present in heaven with his sacramental presence in the Blessed Eucharist. Spiritism is a more subtle temptation, which either ignores or overlooks the sacramental species altogether, or else regards Christ's presence in the sacrament as identical with the presence of a soul in a body. It is true that the body of Christ, being present in this sacrament after the manner of a substance, is entirely present in every part of the host, and in the whole host at the same time. And this is analogous to the presence of a soul in a body. But Christ is not present to the host as a new substantial form. Also, it is most important to remember that a sacrament is not a purely spiritual thing. It is sensible, and therefore its material element is essential to its reality. The more exact our considerations remain, the more easily will we be able to avoid misunderstandings of the real presence. Let us turn to the Council of Trent, having told us that the body of Christ is really present in the Blessed Sacrament, and that this body of Christ is the same which is enthroned in heaven, the Church explains to us that there is here no contradiction. There is no conflict in the fact that our Savior himself is always seated at the right hand of the Father in his natural mode of being, and that at the same time he is nonetheless present in many places sacramentally in his substance, in a manner of being which, though we can hardly express it in words, is nevertheless possible to God. Here we must emphasize the distinction made by the Church between Christ's natural presence and his presence in the sacrament. Both presences are real, and both are equally real. But nevertheless, only the former is strictly a local presence, for only in his quantitative dimensions is the body of Christ directly localized, and this direct localization is realized in heaven, but not on our altars, where he is present indirectly localized by the quantitative dimensions of the host. These dimensions are not his own, and he is therefore not in immediate physical contact with his material surroundings. His contact with us is spiritual and mystical. The presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament is therefore not a local presence. He becomes present in the host, not by any change in himself, but by a change which he effects,
by divine power in the bread, converting its substance into his own body. Transubstantiation is no sense a production of the body of Christ or a local adduction of his flesh. This is not so hard to conceive if we remember that he did exactly the same thing at the Last Supper. Nothing happened to his own person when he pronounced the words which changed bread into his body. He remained locally present at the head of the supper table and became sacramentally present in the bread which he had changed by transubstantiation into himself and which was eaten by the disciples. However, an important distinction is called for here. Since the accidents of bread which contain the substance of Christ's body are themselves localized, they determined his sacramental presence within the limits of the space which they themselves occupy. That is how we say that the body of Christ is in the tabernacle, or in the monstrance, or on the paten. He is substantially where the bread was. Again, we must repeat that the sacramental presence of Christ is no less real than his natural presence. He is just as truly present in the Blessed Sacrament as he is in heaven, but the mode of his presence is entirely different, and this fact is often forgotten by pious writers who treat the sacramental presence as if it were only a thinly disguised local presence. Actually, it is a completely different kind of presence, unique and without any parallel in the natural order. In Aristotelian metaphysics, a material substance enters into contact with external reality only through the accidents which complete it. Now the proper accidents of the body of Christ are hidden, as it were, within his substance. Consequently, he is not in direct physical contact with any material or spatial reality, and he cannot perform any bodily action or undergo any suffering which implies that kind of contact. When the host is divided at the Pax Domini, the body of Christ is not divided, still less does it suffer. If the host is corrupted in the tabernacle, the body of Christ is not corrupted. When the accidents of bread and wine are dissolved within the communicant, the body of Christ is not dissolved. But when he is received in communion, he is received in all literal truth, because the substance of his body and blood is given us in communion. <laughs>